Today, knowledge has power. It controls access to opportunity and advancement. Austrian-born American management consultant and author Peter Drucker conveys the power of knowledge and its importance to advancement in a world where nothing remains constant, where all things are in a state of development or decay. The stagnation in many aspects of Nigeria's agriculture, once the country's main revenue earner, demonstrates this truth. Nigeria, a former world leader in oil palm production with over half a million metric tons per annum and a global market share of 43%, is now a major importer of not just palm oil, but also scores of byproducts from oil palm production. The relegation of agriculture after the discovery of crude oil in commercial quantities in the early 1970s impacted negatively on food and cash crop production, including oil palm development, leaving the country with a 700,000 metric tons palm oil deficit and an import bill of 116.3 billion naira in 2017 alone. With the dwindling value of crude oil in the international market forcing a return to agriculture, one of the crops that is witnessing a resurgence is oil palm. However, the archaic methods of production and processing means that the farmers and processors of oil palm get little value for their toil. This is something that a non-governmental organization, Foundation for Partnership Initiatives in the Niger Delta, PIND, has set out to correct by empowering farmers and processors, especially rural women, who make up the largest number of the workforce in the oil palm value chain, with the knowledge and power to excel. In our first installment on the challenges and prospects of oil palm production in Nigeria on Farmers Market this week, we look at the challenges confronting the sector, especially women who make up the powerless majority of its workforce and efforts to tackle them. Farmers Market, a program that promotes Nigeria's agricultural prowess, identifies the challenges besetting the sector and advocates policies and programs that will help grow Nigeria's agro-economy. Agriculture can only be sustainable if the farmer makes a profit. On Farmers Market, we know this. That's why we go the distance through rough, plain and wet terrain to cover stories about Nigeria's agricultural resurgence. The issues may be small or big, unique to individual farmers or general. We cover them all because they come together to form the bigger picture. We listen to the farmers, understand their needs. Accessing fertilizer is one of the challenges. We experience their toys. <laughs> Celebrate their successes. Young market, the biggest in Nigeria. We seek information necessary to help them make a profit. Farmers Market, growing Nigeria's agro economy, showing every Tuesday at 5 30 pm and Thursdays at 9 30 am on AIT. Welcome to Amafo in Ohaji Egbema local government area of Imo State, Southeast Nigeria. Even a stranger to this community needs not be told that it has a rich history of oil palm production. Palm trees dot every part of the community. Some of them are part of small holder plantations, while many are wild. Another obvious feature of the community can be found in the many local oil palm processing mills scattered across it. Rosemary Awolosom is from these parts. 
a palm oil producer and trader of over two decades. Rosemary buys bunches of palm fruits like these from this state-owned palm plantation on the many smallholder farms in the area for processing into palm oil. When I started the business, I started a very low scale. I do buy from boys, bring it from the bush in a small scale quantity, just about 10 bunches, 20 to 50. But now I can be able to get 10 ton, 20 ton. Then the business is increasing. And the capacity of my process now is about can get 40 cans, jerry cans, from the 10 ton. For Rosemary and other women in the oil palm trade, domestic oil may be the prime product, but it is not the only attraction. This is because kernel in a palm fruit, its shell as well as fiber are all valuable. In fact, as they say, nothing goes to waste in oil palm production. There's a huge um, industry for the palm kernel nuts you, right there in Omwago. There's a place where they all take their nuts to, clean it up, and then buyers come there to buy the nuts. So they sell the nuts, and then they use the bunches and the shafts for fire. Some of them also use it for soap making. Yeah, so um, they, they, they might not be maximizing it to the best, but as much as they can, they're using most of the resources for the things that they can produce around them. The trade may be attractive and highly profitable, but the hard labor dexterity and patience required for oil palm production makes it a job not designed for the weak and impatient. We find it so difficult because it's hard labor. Uh, but we, we can't help it because of the condition of the things. Uh, so we will struggle anyhow to manage up. Uh, what happens to our palm from when it comes from the farm to the mill? This is our meat processing center. So when you come out from the farm, we employ somebody to break, to slice it into pieces so that it can be able to facilitate the shift talent. Do you have anybody here? That will yes, I have a worker who is working for me. Okay. Right. Okay, this is Kebana. They are Kundu. What do you ask? Slice the fire for me. After cutting them up, the palm bunches are then left to dry a bit. This makes it easy to extract the fruits. The fruits are then filtered to remove chaff. Then the processing continues when the loose fruits are then packed into these huge drums to be boiled. This is a process that softens the fiber to make for easy separation from the nuts. It is then loaded into a digester. This is where the fiber which holds the oil is removed from the knot. In this particular meal, the fiber and knots are loaded yet into another machine. This one separates the knots. With the knots separated, The fiber is then loaded into the press, which is manually tightened to squeeze out the oil. Hey. 
For the untrained eyes, this may look like the oil, but it is not. This is palm sludge. It is mixed with water and a lot of impurities. To get the oil out of this, it has to be cooked all over again. It's a tedious process in which you first of all have to heat up the fruit in order to make it soft enough to separate the shaft from the nut. Now, it's from the shaft that you get the oil. The shaft is then taking over to the press and press and the sludge extracted. Now, that sludge is boiled all over again right here to remove the impurities. So, it is always smoky around here. In mechanized meal, we cannot boil. This smoke, you cannot see the stress. You cannot stop. I think they're inhaling it now. <laughs> so we cannot inhale this type of smoke because the boiling method is too steaming from the pipe. So you only just see the steaming going up and it can be done. So in this process, even the separation of the kernel is a stress for us. There is an engine that is supposed to be used for the separation of the kernels. The smoke is not the only health hazard faced by those who work in local oil mills like this one. The process of pressing the oil out of the fiber is also a huge physical strain. The presser is operated by maybe one or two strong men who turn and push it, you know, in order to extract the oil. When they get tired, they stop because, you know, and this can only be done by men. And these men can only do it for a few years. After three to four years, they start experiencing back pain and discomfort. If you go to the village, you'll be able to meet them. This is the toil that the majority of oil palm processors endure to get palm oil. There are a few more advanced mills that cut out a lot of the drudgery involved in oil palm production, like this locally fabricated one owned by Stanley. It runs on a diesel-powered automobile engine, obviously removed from an articulated vehicle. Even its operators are called drivers. This is a, the boiler where we put water from this place now. Uh, the water now, it will put fire there, the steam will hot the water. The steam will go to 100 degrees centigrade. The steam will add from there, it will move to this sterilizer tank. This tank here is where we, where we put our palm fruit. The steam now will stay almost 7 to 10 minutes, it will be okay done. Now we start our machine. Now we put the, the digester on. The digester on, we open it. The two will go into the digestion aspect. After the digestion, we send it to pressing. Pressing now, we press it. The onion now will start from there. Enter to one the hole in deep somewhere there. We have the small drum, we put a drum there. The difference between the old one and the new one, this one now, before you process this one now, this new automobile, you can uh, arrange your palm fruit today and you process it today. And that one now, you do it and you keep it to tomorrow because you have to cook it. This one, you, you cook it instantly and you get your result. That one now, you have to wait to tomorrow so that uh, you can start processing. You cook it over, overnight. Stanley's mill is a typical example of the importance of women in oil palm production. Of the 25 workers employed here, at least 20 are women who work for a maximum of 2,000 naira a day. The, the Bangawa is a million. It's helping me to, every, at least every month I will get like 30,000 to pay my 
to dance with you. So I used to go to a company, like that other pan. I used to go there and buy my pants food. Sometimes I would buy like 2,000 bunches, 2,000, 3,000 bunches. So I will not drop it in a week. Let me say, by the grace of God, I always make like 120 kind of 150. The day that I will process my banga, I will knock my banga, so I will supervise the people that are doing it. So if I want, if there is anything like loose fruit, I help them to gather it. So after that one, so if they fly the banga finish, so I will put, I will look for somebody who will pack the dirty for me. So after the dirty, so I will now put the people that will load the, the pan fruit for me. So after what they load it, I will make sure that I will rag everything, like seeds, pan fruit. Uh -huh. So I will not leave anyone for this, so I will pack everything. Despite their sheer number and hard work in the oil palm industry, women hardly own palm plantations or even mills. For instance, it costs at least 4.5 million naira to set up a mill like Stanley's own, putting it out of the reach of most of the rural women. So I'm looking to grow higher if I can get any help because we have a place even where we can get about 100 tons a day and process it, then we'll get a lot of quantity of oil. What is stopping you from producing? We don't have much money, we don't have money. There's no, no head to, put, to get the pan fruit. Money to buy enough pan fruit. Enough pan fruit. Like where we are going now in Omago, they have a, what we call meetings, ta meeting, ta tax meeting, that's where we get our money. And the microfinance loan, which I'm also operating. We borrow a little money there with enough interest and the problem is imposing on us. Some people can borrow the money, they cannot be able to pay back. Then the, the bank will be pursuing them all about. So myself, I process from getting money from the microfinance. So if one can get aid from any other body that will be a little bit lesser for us, it will help us. Part of the measures to address this problem are being taken by a non-governmental organization, Foundation for Partnership Initiatives in the Niger Delta, PIND, and the Nigerian Institute for Oil Palm Research, NIFO, which have developed a more affordable, efficient, and drudge-free oil palm production unit. It is driven by an 8-horsepower diesel engine. It drives the digester screw press. On top is the digester, below is the press. Farmers were losing about 7,500 naira every time they process a ton of palm oil because of the poor effective technology, the poor technology they were using. Um, they, were, they had to spend hours, 8 to 12 hours, to process one ton of oil palm and would only get 100 or 120 liters. So PIN decided to identify a technology that would give them higher yield, less drudgery, and even the women could operate and use this technology while increasing their income. To be identified the um, digester screw press, the improved processing technology, and started an intervention to promote it among the smallholders in Imo states and other states in the Niger Delta. The improved technology, you just pour the loose fruit into a sterilizer, and within one hour, the fruit is boiled, and then it discharges into a digester and is automatically pressed and your oil comes out and sends it to the clarifier which clarifies it and you just collect your oil in a gallon. This is a simple and seamless process that takes less than two hours and you have your oil instead of all of the process that was described with the old technology. Processing is not the only aspect of oil palm production that is still archaic. There are also challenges of quality seedlings and ancient methods of harvesting which involves climbing the trees. This is a cultural practice that persists despite the availability of more efficient and less hazardous harvesting methods. We identified that climbers were going out of business. They were, they, were, they, were, they were scarce climbers. It was dangerous to climb and many, about 40% of the fruits on the trees were being left to rot. So after identifying this constraint, we found two technologies that could adopt, um, uh, address this issue. One of them is a mechanical adjustable harvester, which is a machine that you can harvest while standing on your feet. Anybody can use it. 
anybody can use it, male, female, everybody, young, old, and, and they are loving it and using it. The second one is a, a technology that is not so old, but it is not so popular, which is the use of the Malaysian knife. You get the Malaysian knife and attach a pole to it, and that can harvest any tree. So with those two technologies, we do not expect anyone to be climbing, we do not expect people to live um, fruits on the trees anymore. You know, there's no more economic loss, little um, accidents and less dangers. We understand that some people are still climbing because it's, um, it's more than just an economic reason. It is also a traditional thought. But we hope that over time, while we are promoting this, showing them the, both the economic and the social benefits, um, they, would, they would reduce, we could drastically reduce the climbers. And then over time, people would not need to climb trees anymore because it is dangerous. They could slip from the trees, the, the rope could cut or they could be attacked by snakes at the top of the trees. Lots of issues with climbing. We have entered the first stage, which is to let these farmers know that this can work better when you apply this technology. Are you getting it? Now, it is clear we are showcasing what we have done the result of the experiment. We call it experiment because it's a new thing for them. So the next the next stage will be to scale up so that more people can adopt this technology. Then after that we we'll now talk of how to now go into processing. How to go into processing. It will not come just all of, at the same time. Now processing will be the the what do you call it the last stage so that when this uh, they get these raw materials, they can process them and make more money. So it's a stage-by-stage -stage process. The government, by the grace of God, has done well, like uh, attracting PIN, for example, to come and uh, explore these opportunities that are bound here. So the next stage will be, uh, just like what you said, we are looking in that direction, support them, acquire all these uh, equipment, these net technologies, and then go into processing and even export. Agriculture can only be sustainable if the farmer makes a profit. On farmers' markets, we know this. That's why we go the distance through rough, plain and wet terrain to cover stories about Nigeria's agricultural resurgence. The issues may be small or big, unique to individual farmers or general. We cover them all because they come together to form the bigger picture. We listen to the farmers, understand their needs. Accessing fertilizer is one of the challenges. We experience their toys. <laughs> Celebrate their successes. This is exactly the young market, the biggest in Nigeria. We seek information necessary to help them make a profit. Farmers Market, growing Nigeria's agro-economy. Showing every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 9.30 a.m. on AIT. With huge palm plantations like this one scattered across the southeast and south-south geopolitical zones of the country, Nigeria has the potential not only to meet domestic palm oil needs and save the over 100 billion naira expended on importation annually, but also to take back its leadership position in global oil production. However, it will remain just another of the country's many potentials unless deliberate efforts are made to acquire the knowledge that will create access to the advancement and opportunities in the global oil palm trade, as demonstrated by Pind and NIFO. That's Farmer's Market for this week.